So uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to our uh, Women Role Model Talk series. As customary, I will begin with just letting you know a little bit about Pune Knowledge Cluster. It has been established by the Office of the Principal Scientific Advisor, Advisor, the Government of India. It aims to bring together academia, R&D institutions, and the industry of Pune and its surrounding areas to address the challenging problems of the region through innovative means using scientific knowledge and engaging highly skilled human resources. We host the Women, Women Role Model Talk series as part of our Vigyan program, which is an initiative by PKC for promoting chemistry among women in collaboration with BASF. So the Women Role Model, uh, to, uh, the Women Role Model in STEM series is an initiative by PKC, which aims to bring forward the journey of women in various fields of uh, STEM. This series is conducted in an informal conversational format to help the audience relate to the lives of successful women professionals in SNT, knowing firsthand about their success stories, their failures, and how they move ahead to make a mark in their field. We hope that this initiative will inspire young women to break gender stereotypes, societal barriers, and encourage them to pursue careers in STEM. Our guest today is Dr. Menaga Bagendran, and the title of the talk is My Entrepreneurial Journey in Pharmaceutical Industry. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, just to give you your uh, introduction, uh, I would uh, go ahead and then um, I'd just to give you a brief about the session. Uh, Dr. Uh, Menaga established a biotechnology firm called Bionetech in 2013, and uh, she leads her team of scientists in process development in API, which is active pharmaceutical ingredients and intermediates. Uh, she has also started another uh, company called Nega Green Lab LLP in 2019, an exclusive manufacturing facility for production of enzymes. She has worked in a pharma company in China for three years until she decided to return to India and start her own bench. Before embarking on the journey, she was a senior lecturer. She did her doctoral study under the guidance of Dr. S. Foundation. Uh, she completed her PhD in microbiology chemistry from the University of Madras and her MPhil MSc in microbial technology from Center for Marine Science and Technology Mano, uh, Manomanyam uh, Sundaran University, Tirunel Veli. She has publications in many national and international peer review journals along with her team. During, her COVID, during the COVID-19 pandemic, her team developed herbal steam inhalation devices using plant extracts. Her team worked on Remdesivir to enhance its structure for better results and filed a patent for it. Her team has also developed bioplastic from plant waste. Dr. Vinaga wants to use green bay of chemical extraction, avoiding harmful solvents by using water as a solvent and enzymes as catalysts. Her aim is to make India self-reliant for pharma raw materials without importing them. And she will be sharing her business journey in the chemical and pharmaceutical industry today. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Our uh, session will be for one and a half hours, uh, and uh, we will have 15 minutes for your presentation, followed by a Q&A session. So um, you can either use the chat board, who, or the attendees can use the chat board to write their questions, which we will take at the end. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so that... Uh... I can. I'm very glad to share my entrepreneurial journey with the student community as well as the other people. Uh, yeah. So myself, uh, I'm Dr. Menaka Magendran, uh, Managing Director of Bionimtech India Private Limited from Women's Biotech Park, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. So uh, yeah, we are working on some uh, different unique platform in pharmaceutical world. It's a sustainable game changer model. So I can explain you what is the domain I am here uh, as of now. Next slide, please. So who we are, actually, we are a leading global contract research and manufacturing organization. Uh, we manufacture products that are highly demanded across the globe, like key start material, 
as you know what is the key start materials uh, for making uh, for making the formulations and for making the apis and intermediates and the apis for pharmaceutical and nutraceutical company we manufacture the products and we also support the client for scouting uh, you know formula new formula for manufacturing that products so we drive innovation in chemistry and biotechnology while elevating excellence with a commitment to quality and regulatory compliance so what are all the products we are making we actually uh, match with the regulatory compliance so we do not normally do the products uh, you know with the local uh, you know without a standard one we match with the regulatory uh, compliance and we make the products next slide please my uh, actually the overall journey so far in 2013 uh i completed my phd in madras university uh in my in my phd topic is in uh, neem endophytic fungus i uh, we have i have screened around uh, so many drugs from the neem endophytes and uh, i did my phd in madras university completed in 2012 after completing my phd you know i we, i were like when we when i am doing my master degree itself i did my masters msc mphil from ms university uh, the, it is in uh, south uh, tamil nadu and when my i when i am doing my ma masters degree itself uh, uh, i was like uh, i was dry with passion to start a business but i don't know from where to start the business how to start the business i don't have any idea but only the passion is i want to be a business woman so once completed my masters degree and when coming to chennai i completed my phd in chennai and then after completing my ph phd i got an idea of okay we can start a small uh, training center model to uh, for the students so that because uh, myself and my husband is also a doctorate we thought we will be starting a lab which support the students for uh, you know give training for the uh, research as well as uh, for uh, Uh, you know it's comfortable place for them to do the final year thesis like that support we can uh, start like that with that concept in 2013 we started this bionim tech india private limited in women's biotech park chennai so up to 2000 uh, you know around 3 uh, years we were totally working only with the students community <coughs> in 2013 with that concept uh, myself and my Uh, husband dr mahendran he uh, he is a chemist and i am a microbiologist we started this bionim tech india private limited in women's biotech park actually only to support the students community so far from up to 2016 uh, you know uh, to 17 we were only giving a it's like a very comfortable zone for the students for making their thesis for uh, working for their thesis final year thesis um, and for the phd work also they used to come for us because we are specialization in column chromatography that is we used to isolate the active molecules the bioactive molecules from the plant extract uh, from the uh, you know uh, algal extract as well as uh, you know from the microbes we used to isolate like xanthan xanthanides carotenoids uh vitamins bioactive molecules we used to isolate from the crude extract so uh, people come for uh, we have given around uh, you know projects and trainings for nearly workshops we conduct workshops so around 600 students for, from 2013 to up to 2018 we are totally working with the students uh then around 2017 actually i got an opportunity to you know to go to china to there 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 was a recruitment that they need a microbiologist to come and set up a microbiology lab in their facility it is a, it is a mnc uh, pharmaceutical company uh, they are working for the fda fda products us fda products but they need a microbiologist to you know uh, set up the lab uh, compliance with the fda audit fda complaints so uh, once i got that opportunity i thought okay i will go we will, i will go there and make set up the lab there and support them but meantime i also don't want to shut down the lab here so i put a team here and the team were managing the students i went from 2016 to 2018 i went to china and then i i supported the chinese pharmaceutical company to set up the lab there and then after 2018 i came back to india i took the lab to the next level of uh, uh, you know like next level like 
uh, from 2013 to 2016, I was working only with the students community. And then once I uh, go to China, I got a different experience because I started working with the industry people. I understood that in the pharma company, there is so much of demanded products are there, like not only um, uh, from uh, China, so many countries, they are depending on India for making their uh, APIs for making their formulation the same. India is also depending on other countries for taking the key start materials, for importing the key start materials and intermediates from other countries to India. So I understood that in the pharmaceutical company, there are so many players out there. So I would like to, you know, once I got uh, more interest on the pharmaceutical company, since even though I am a microbiologist, uh, once I enter into the pharma company, I got more interest on making the pharma products, uh, APIs, intermediates. I would like to work in that uh, domain. So I, uh, in 2018, we started to work on, uh, to synthesize, we started to work on the uh, small volume, high value products because, you know, the pharmaceutical, uh, you know, the pharma, pharma is a, is a multi-billion dollar, uh, you know, uh, money playing uh, uh, pro, uh, this one, a domain. So just like that, we can't start a pharma company. Even to start with a small scale-up model, we need in crores. So, but we are not in such a position to start with a small company itself. So, so, so we focus on the small volume, high value products. Like, that is, we are not working on the mass production like in grams, gram level, level of challenging molecules, that is the small volume and high volume products for pharmaceutical and nutraceutical company. And also we are another uh, sector is we want to work, we work, start working on the reference standards. Like most of the pharmaceutical companies for their product uh, formulation, making the formulation, making the product, they always get a reference standards from outside. So it is like matching to make the product. They need the reference standard for each and every step to understand, to analyze whether the product is formed or not. So that type of reference standard is also they need only in MG level, but it will be the cost is more. And so that the space is also, you know, we can synthesize the molecule in the small lab itself. So I started working on the small volume, high value products, as well as the reference standards from 2018. So after two years, you know, we got a very good network of people because since we are working more with the quality of the product we are giving. So clients to client, we got so much of clients uh, through, you know, um, like uh, what to say, because of our quality products, so many international clients also, two, three international clients, they are interested to uh, work with us. So in 2020, uh, we have we got, got the research support services from the global clients like Spain, China, USA and Germany for the developing their molecules, API development and uh, technology transfer, they came to us for, uh, you know, uh, to get the support. So we signed the first agreement uh, for an international client in 2020. From 2020, we started our uh, big, uh, you know, a big, I can say it as a milestone in my journey because in the first international client, we started working for the uh, product development. So at that time, there, there came a problem. When I signed the first agreement, and they also sanctioned the project, but there comes the COVID. There is no flight or no logistics between the countries. Most of the key start material and intermediates, we were depending on other countries for making our product. So we were not able to, the project is sanctioned, everything is ready, but we were not able to get the raw materials from the outside from other countries. The logistic is totally stopped for two years. So there we suffered a lot. Then we thought, why can't we make the intermediates by ourselves? Why we are depending on other countries uh, for uh, getting the raw materials? So at that time, we understood that there is also a disease uh, spread fastly that you, you can also you can remind that it's a black fungus disease. The black fungus disease, when it is prevailing fast in India, uh, we were we have the technology to make the i mean we means india india has the full technology to make the uh, product uh, make the drug for the black fungus but he, in that phase also people are depending for the key start material imported key start material so at that time our honorable prime minister uh, uh, modi ji sir also uh, insisted on like if you are manufacturing the key start material or intermediates by our own under the make in india uh, system definitely we are yeah, government is ready to give more uh, subsidies, more support like that. So then we thought, why can't we start working on this uh, globally demand key start material and intermediates, which is totally India is depending on the import model. 
So for that also, we have screened a lot of molecules, not all, all the molecules we can't work it on because we are a, we are a very small uh, startup group with around 15 scientists. So all the molecules we can't screen with our own funding. We started to work on some challenging molecules. And also we found that uh, in other countries, like some of the Western countries, uh, Pfizer, Merck, like big, big companies, they started working on a new method called green chemistry model. The green chemistry, what is the green chemistry now? Like, you know, in the pharma uh, pharma area, why the pharma is said to be a uh, very different area? Because always it will be uh, situated in some red category places, There's so many pollution. Because while going for a reaction or making a reaction, you know, normally for the last 40 to 50 years, India is working on the conventional method of uh, synthesis. Like they used to go for a big, big reactors and people uh, use uh, the process will have multi steps. Uh, process will have the hazardous chemicals, solvents, so many carbon emission. So always the pharmaceutical uh, industry is said to be an isolated one. Uh, you know, it is not like an IT with a different Porsche, uh, you know, uh, ambient mo models or something. It is like a different isolated area because we are using hazardous chemical solvents. It is a multi-step process, big, big reactors for making a molecule itself. But now uh, Pfizer, Merck, uh, so many uh, Eli Lilly, like big, big companies, they want to synthesize molecule using a eco-friendly model. That is what actually called us green chemistry model. That is the continuous flow reactor. We can synthesize the molecule, not in the big, big reactors, even with the small reactors. It is designed, it is customized and designed in such a way that, and there is no, not uh, usage of any hazardous or chemical solvents in this process. We are using only the eco-friendly solvents as well as mainly 75% water is used to synthesize the molecule. So, uh, because, uh, you know, when our team is in... Uh, uh, you know, in, I mean, myself and Mahindran is in China for the four, four years in China. And we understand that we got experience, we got expertise in that field. And we thought, why can't we make that intermediates and, you know, this key start material through the green chemistry model. So we imported the first in 2020, 21, yeah, in 2021. We made a proposal to our state government as well as to the central government saying that there is a domain like this, that is the green chemistry, continuous flow chemistry, but we need support, uh, you know, to get the reactor so that we can start working on that. So these are all some of the molecules we would like to synthesize. And these are all the molecules, which is 80% India is importing from other countries. If my, if my company is able to make this the molecules using this green chemistry model, using these reactors, definitely it, it, is, it pays way for, uh, you know, production of these molecules by ourselves in India itself. And, uh, you know, it's a very easy, it pays way to the, you know, we are progressing towards the trillion dollar economy. So like that, I made a proposal to state government as well as central government. Luckily, both the state government as well as central government supported with the grant. State, go state government, MSME has given one, uh, one grant, they sanctioned with one grant, as well as uh, we are also the Bayrak Seed Fund winner from Biotech Park for this green chemistry model. So with that, uh, you know, support, we, I, we have imported two reactors and started working on the molecules, uh, synthesizing molecules using the green chemistry model. In 2022, we have got the first, we have filed the first patent. That is a blood clot molecule, synthesizing blood clot molecules using these uh, reactors, continuous flow reactors. Recently, like two months back, the patent has got granted. That is synthesis of tranexamic acid. It is a blood clot molecule using the green chemistry, continuous flow chemistry model. And I'm very glad to say that it is the first patent in that particular uh, you know, first patent of that uh, blood clot molecule using this continuous flow chemistry globally. Now we are also working on filing the patent, uh, global uh, patent. Now, recently, uh, you know, we have developed uh, the three, four technology process for our products and 2024, 23, actually we have hired a US FDA site because in Biotech Park, what we have is a pilot plant where we can only produce up to gram scale, gram to kilogram scale. 
but there is so much of need for our clients for making in multi tons and we are producing the molecules we want to enter into our clients want to enter into european uh, market so you all know that uh, most of the you know all the pharma products we are synthesizing should uh, should match with the regulatory compliance we can't make it in uh, non gmb site and uh, get into the into european or us market so we have hired a gmb facility uh, in chennai so for uh, 10 years we have made an agreement and uh, now we are in the process of uh, you know producing this uh, product all my product from 2024 may we start will our we will be entering into the indian market as well as the european market so this is my journey so far next slide please so coming to the recognition and awards yeah uh, i said uh, when i started in 2013 but when 2018 uh, from 18 i started working with the industrial people from that i have got a very good uh, awards and recognition from so many people like in silicon india our best biotech uh, company i featured in uh, our company has featured in silicon india from confederation of indian industry so they featured uh, a top 50 women in stem uh, in 2021 the same in 2021 our state government uh, tamil nadu has sanctioned the msme uh, ivp grant for entering into this green chemistry model and 2022 uh, best micro industry award was given by uh, tamil nadu government to our company uh, meantime i also got trained from uh, indian institute of management bangalore uh, there i have got an opportunity to take uh, the, some Uh, some days of training as a 10k woman that was actually sanctioned by goldman sachs program in that goldman sachs program uh, uh, i was awarded as a business excellency certificate of recognition for business excellency that was actually conducted by indian institute of management bangalore so in 2022 yeah we got the best micro industry award by all india manufacturing association and it was award was distributed by our honorable cm uh, of tamil nadu next So this is the first patent which I have explained about the green chemistry. So we have two patent, one two patents in green chemistry. One is granted, recently granted, and now one is filed. So why I am uh, very glad to say this is because uh, green chemistry is a new model technology, new domain where only very small key players are in this green chemistry. Like even the key key players, what I am saying is a uh, big big players like Pfizer, Merck. so many big players uh, dr reddy's laboratory like so many players are working on this green chemistry bionimtech as a small company a very small company with only 15 to 20 15 scientists and five experts around 20 people we also started uh, we have made a baby step in this green chemistry and in 2023 our patent has granted in green chemistry so we are very glad to share this uh, thing to you we go on the process patent for synthesis in tranexamic acid acid using continuous flow chemistry it's a green chemistry model so coming to the tranexamic acid it has a market opportunity worth of nearly 14.41 million dollars in the blood clot molecule market it has a huge demand of this molecule so we are also planning to work out coming to uh, making a commercial model next yeah as i explained uh, about the indian pharmaceutical industry so i already uh, given more explanation so india is said to be the third largest in the world uh, by volume and 14 the largest in the terms of value it contributes about 3.5 percentage of total drugs and medicines exported globally so <coughs> significantly india is depending on the import of some basic raw materials bulk drugs as well as uh, you know in the year uh, i have taken this from the uh, some uh, data so future growth of pharmaceutical sector is our ability to ensure uninterrupted supply of quality bulk drugs if there is an uninterrupted supply of quality bulk, bulk drugs it it means that we should not stop anywhere to get the key start material from other countries that means we have to make the key start material and intermediates by our own so that there will be always an uninterrupted global supply of bulk drugs all over the world from india so here i am uh, what this green chemistry definitely if uh, we are giving uh, you know if we are giving more importance and uh, taking to the commercial uh, site definitely we can be a, a trillion dollar economy as well as we also we, we we can be a global supplier of bulk drugs to uh, 
uh, all over the all over uh, the world next yeah the problems we are trying to solve is yes there is a convention always the for the last 40 to 50 years there is a conventional method of making the molecules dependency on imported pharma products of ksm as well as apis and intermediates cost inefficiency because we are importing most of the product from the outside from other countries there is a there is no uh, you know uh, cost inefficiency is there for the current uh, production process the people unsafe because since we are using the big reactors uh, hazardous chemicals and solvents. There is an unsafe process, environmental pollution uh, for the current batch manufacturing process. Production process can't stop once started. These are all some of the disadvantages of the conventional method. Environmental unsafe production, carbon emission, unsustainable production model. So these are all the problems we are trying to solve using our solution. Next. Our solution is nothing but the continuous flow chemistry model where we can synthesis molecules using the uh, flow chemistry continuously. And it is a safe process. I have already explained more about this. It is a controlled production environment. It has increased efficiency, energy process, cost, uh, cost is reduced here and resources is more. Next. Yeah, the same. Why pharma industry needs switching from batch to flow chemistries? As I explained, uh, the reactions can be run faster by superheating reagents under pressure. Reaction can run much more safety and reproducibility. Easier to scale up. That is very important. Easier to scale up to generate large quantities once optimal condition has been, have been established. Uses less energy and creates less waste. Consequently, it's a greener technique and significantly cost efficiency. Next. So as of now, we are, uh, our target market is, uh, uh, we are making the molecules under the ICH guideline, that is the international uh, standard uh, FDA EP guidelines. Since we want to enter into, our clients want to enter into the European and uh, US markets, we are making the products uh, based on the ICH, FDA and EP guidelines. Standards are developing by the uh, Bionim Tech. The customer profile is mainly our target is most of the pharmaceutical formulators. We, they get the API intermediates from us and they go for the formulation. So our target the geographies is uh, Europe, USA, Japan, China and Germany. These are all some of the, the target markets we are working on. Next. So currently where we are uh, is uh, we have a pilot plant facility for doing the custom research and custom manufacturing. We have a lab, Kilo Lab pilot plant with the stainless steel reactors. You can see here I have given a snapshot of our uh, company. Uh, we have glass line reactors, vapor phase reactors, continuous flow chemistry reactors, a fermenter of 1000 liters, 100 liters and 12 liters, hydrogenator, industrial centrifuge, tray dryer, spray dryer and lyophilizer. It's a small scale organization with around 15 employees and six consultants, experts. We have around a built up area of 4,500 square feet in Women's Biotech Park. Meantime, we also sub, uh, hired a FDA site for making our commercial products. So our current customer is based on China, Chennai, Korea, Bangalore, USA and uh, Hyderabad. We also got grant from MSME and our first round investor is Bayrak. Uh, it is an equity model. We got the seed fund from Bayrak. We are very glad to our uh, state government as well as the central government for supporting this green chemistry. Next. So you can see these are the lab facilities we have. We have a flow reactor, gel dock, analytical HPLC, preparatory HPLC, polymerase chain reactors. So with all those basic amenities only, we can synthesize the molecules. Next. So these are all some of the clippings. We have the national as well as international collaboration with the, uh, you know, some uh, two, three, uh, you know, three, four uh, countries and we are working for the clients. Uh, next. So why we want to be is a champion in the green chemistry, utilizing cutting edge technology. We want to be a leading contract research and manufacturing organization in the small volume, high value APA product. Emerge as an industry unicorn by 2025 is our target to kind of have an industry unicorn in green chemistry model. Next. 
so this is our uh, actually this is our uh, key management team for all the uh, business uh, aspirants uh, you know uh, uh, what i am saying is you need to have a passion in your domain what type of products you are taking what is your uh, you know idea how to convert into a business idea so you will have an experience you will have everything with you money sometimes you can also get the grant but you need to have a, a mentor you need to have a team to support you to guide you to make a business strategy then only you can be a successful business a successful business is always a profitable business anyone can start a business that doesn't matter whether it is a profitable business yes only when it comes to a profitable business you can give job opportunity employ employment opportunity to so many people and revenue there is there should be a return of investment for your investors so you need a team you need a mentors to support you so uh, this is me i am the chairperson and founder of this company and co-founder and cso is dr mahendra and our key advisory team is dr devan mr vishwanathan and our business strategist is mr aspar swaminathan so we are all the key uh, team members working for the uh, you know progress of this company next thank you this is my small uh, you know video clippings of my entrepreneur journey so please shoot your questions thank you dr minaga um, for that very inspiring talk um if i may begin while we wait for questions to come on the chat box um this forum is for sharing your professional as well as to some extent your personal journey so if i may start with you mentioned at the beginning of your talk about knowing very clearly very early on that you wanted to be a businesswoman you come also from a state where the emphasis on higher education is very very high uh which i'm assuming you are from tamil nadu um so uh, i i i mean i know that there are many women entrepreneurs in tamil nadu in traditional businesses and things like that but in the science based business space it's only maybe over the last 8 to 9 years that we are seeing women uh, actually take upon roles in the science and technology uh, business space so what what was that conviction or where did that clarity come from that you were you were so clear that after pursuing a career or uh, your studies in an academic setting that you wanted to do business yes ma'am uh, good question actually so there is a uh, there is an interest a passion there was a passion with me when i am doing my masters degree itself uh, i just want to be a business woman that's a different story that is my passion but i know that see money with the money only with the money we can't as i said uh, business uh, they, they, we can't be a start a successful business only with the money we need experience we need more experience we need a guidance and at that time when i am doing my masters itself my role model is uh, dr shah dr kiran shah madam actually uh, so she is my role model uh, so even i when i did my msc i did remember i wrote a letter a mail to her saying that madam i don't know i just want to be like you but i don't know how to start where to start i just want to be like you in the future and she replied to me yes all the best menaka like that so that that's you know <laughs> the thing like that. but i i was keenly observing what is what she has done yes she was a professional you know she did the uh, masters in uh, some uh, microbiology brevers and she went to abroad she got so many experience uh, with that experience she started a small company some enzyme company in her car shed so i was keenly observing what is her how did she made that so i can also from that i understood okay we i should also qualify myself just like that i can't start a business so once i did my msc mphil i got a job in engineering college in chennai by doing the same uh, you know i also enrolled for the phd the phd for 4 uh, to 5 years dedicatedly i was working in the research but my mind was totally with the business so uh, once the phd is over i don't want to be in a comfort zone going for some college or something like college is not a comfort zone but still i want to take a challenging position like uh, kiran shah madam so once my phd is over i cleanly planned and then i started my business unit so qualification is very important the, for the people who are taking business in the science in the science domain stem in the stem domain yeah 
So just for the audience here, um, Dr. Menaga's reference was to Dr. Kiran Mazumdar Shah, who is one of India's maybe first biotech women entrepreneurs who started Biocon. And of course, beyond that, many other companies um, and almost now has a conglomerate of uh, biotech companies that she owns and runs, a role model for many, many women in the biotech space um, in India. Um, also, Wait, general... actually, I am waiting for a day to meet her at least for five minutes. Still, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Ma'am, may I ask a, a question? What is yes. a unicorn industry, if I may ask? what You mentioned a unicorn industry. So I the just... companies turn over more than 100 crores. When, it, when, when its turnover is more than 100 crores, uh, not only the turnover, the valuation. Valuation of the company is more than 100 crores. It's an unicorn. So right now you are aiming for uh, your company to be a unicorn. Uh, yes. yes, my target by 2025, I have to be, a, a, you know, emerge as a unicorn industry, unicorn company in this pharma industry. Sorry about that, Minaga. For some reason, I got locked off. Yeah. But I did hear most of what you said. And I was going to add that uh, I'm sure in a few years, uh, some of these women on this forum today will be looking up to you like you looked up to her. Um, and uh, hope you are an inspiration to them for them to start their journeys too. Um, also, if we look at your career journey in your company, 10 years in a, in a biotech industry is actually a very, very short period of time to accomplish what you have done. It's a, it's a very, very steep journey uh, that you've had over the last 10 years. And uh, starting with being sort of a capacity building organization, skilling organization for students, and doing something which is now high in a very, very highly regulated space, which is the drug industry space, uh, following a lot of guidelines, restrictions, rules, especially uh, where you're also catering to clients. Um, how did you sort of, was this organic? Like you, because I'm sure when you were training students, did you always have at the end goal that you will be a, a company which provides services in the drug space and you will, you know, do this in the way that you're professionally doing it now internationally, etc. Or did you, was this something that happened over a period of time? No, uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, can you? So did you, when you started your organization, it was... You did, I think initially you mentioned that you trained a large number of right. students. Yes. Uh, so were you, did you always intend your organization to be a training organization or did you no. know that at some point you will transition into services and drug, uh, like drug discovery services? Yeah. Ma'am, actually, uh, I was more interested in making some products. I want to make the products to the market. That is what my actual interest, like uh, uh, actually when I start, see the, 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 the passion changes. I want to be a business woman. Okay, fine. What is your domain? So at that time, when I am starting, I was more interested in making the food products. Uh, I am very good at making in uh, wines with a different taste. So I have more interest in the brewery industry. Uh, but that, that also, the, see, the investment part, then coming to the investment part, it is a different story, right? We need to have some good yeah. investment for making some food production or something else. So by start with, we, we want a lab first. We want the lab to, to do our research, even to make a food product with the different tasters or something. I need a lab. I can't do it in the kitchen. I need a lab with all the pH, uh, centrifuge, at the small investment. So we thought we will be making a small, we, with a small investment, we will start a lab. But at, uh, only the research can't feed you, feed you and your employee. I started my company with one direct, I mean, two directors and two employees. Okay, just two employees. We started in 2013. So rental is there. So many things are there. So what we thought is with this small investment, we have made a small lab setup so we can give training to the students. It will feed us. It's like a breadwinner. Just a breadwinner concept. We started working, but students uh, got more. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like students came attracted more towards our company. They want to interact us. So for the la next three to four years, even though we we want to do research on food products and take it to the market, we were not able to spend time for that because we were totally for <laughs> trapped towards the student training projects. But once in 2000, we were at, at some point, we, we were like, okay, somewhere else we were missing. Okay, students' community training is another work. 
even now even now i have a separate unit for students training workshop everything but that is not my area so i was i want to take the product to the market that is my uh, you know initially we started the lab for that so in 2018 19 we started working on uh, once we went to china and come back we got more exposure you know outside exposure we thought okay fine they have some money also in hand so we started working on the pharma products because there there is a small switch from the food dye switch to pharma that is the only switch over i got because i went outside i got uh, more interest in the pharma products uh, otherwise even now i have a separate unit for students training workshop but my focus more is on making pharma products uh, that is the, we should not depend on the imported uh, uh, products india should not depend on the imported drugs that is very danger now we can't uh, you know uh, it's it's what to say if there is some disease and we were not able to uh, get the key start material or intermediate for making the drugs the disease will not stop like what i said the black fungus in the covid period yeah. so there is we know how to make the drug but we don't have the key start material and intermediates we are depending on china and other countries and they stop the logistics but the disease will not stop so this is a very danger so uh, so then only we started working okay fine we will start making this key start material and intermediates by our own and we are uh, slowly we are getting success and uh, and the, our main thing is we want to make the molecule using the green chemistry no pollution no carbon it's a green chemistry model that's why state government and central government is supporting our company to are making this uh, green chemistry model right um so tell me when how do you decide what you want to make so uh, how, how much of due diligence and background work goes into deciding what kind of apis you want to make because i'm sure you have a, you want to have a competitive advantage in terms of what you make um the reason i ask is because there are a lot of students on this platform and very passionate about the sciences but understanding of uh, uh, you know how that translates into business um is something that uh, you know they may be on their journey to learn so could you also tell us a little bit about so we completely understand the science part and you know the fact that you have a green chemistry process which is maybe proprietary to what you do uh, uh, to make these molecules or apis how do you decide which ones to make and what kind of background work goes into making that decision ma'am actually uh, this i will say fortunate as well as luck because i am basically a microbiologist but my team uh, our co-founder dr mahindran is a chemist with more than 25 to 30 years of experience in api and he is leading a 15 scientist in in my company they both the chemist and biotechnology this is totally an intelligent play game it is nothing to do with the money it is totally an intelligent play game when anyone want to start a business in stem see with the only with the money or only with some grant definitely they can't success there need some sharp mind intelligence because say for example we got i said easily like we got the international client but it is not a easy one we made a proposal to them we have given more than 30 to 40 formula how to scout a molecule and from that they made a command they have came for an online interview and we made a proof of concept just like that they will not pro- sanction the project the proof of concept means we have to make the formula we have to make the product in gram scale in mg level then we have to give it to them once the proof of concept is given they have sanctioned the project it is totally a intelligent play game so anybody want to start a business in stem definitely they should be they should be ready to learn update the learning process is very very important just like a copycat process or something definitely we can't success in stem business we should have a creativity we should have a creativity first of all why did i choose a green chemistry model because our from the expert feedback from at the time of uh, interaction uh, you know we understand that this plays a game changer that's what elon musk has done why he is now a multi billionaire because uh, like other people he started but why his he had a different it's a, it's a game changer well, his focus everything is different so like that uh, for the stem for the stem platform so we need to have a uniqueness domain creativity should be there learning updated learning should be there 
and we need a team of people with us to support us it it is yeah. not a one man army i am saying i am not a one man la one lady to do this i have a team back working on for the progress of this company yeah also you mentioned about uh, being focused on being a business that makes products you also mentioned you offer services um could you tell us you know what is the difference between a product company and a service company and what would be the you know different difference in terms of resources you need if you want to make products in the company or offer services services is like you can uh, like uh, when i give a support to the first i started with the students project that is a different story but then i uh, entered into the service industry like uh, we were giving uh, support to the clients for um you know we will be making the products we will be giving the technology to them that is the service like we have some analytical setup with us so we will be analyzing our whether our synthesis to product is up to the level they have their specification so we have to match with the specification of the clients so these are all the service industry but later on now you know uh, the clients want us to make the products that is a different story like making the product definitely you need crores of money you need a mass Uh, infrastructure for the pharma company you need a mass infrastructure everything and you need the pollution vulnerable clearance should be there ethical committee so many things are there so at this point i i have no uh, you know investor or anybody to invest on this point so but the client is also ready to take the product to the european market so what we did is we have hired a site of fd i mean they have all the facility they have their own product and uh, it is not a easy also everyone will not allow a third party manufacturing uh, it's a italian based company actually so when he came to india i personally go to i personally sent a mail got an appointment i made a proposal to him that we have a technology actually uh, the company is very nearby to my biotech park so i invited to my lab i uh, we have uh, we showed our expert and our uh, <clears throat> proposal like once the technology is ready here we want to take the commercial production at this point we were not able to spend money for me ma uh, for making a full infrastructure so can you give uh, uh, support to your site then uh, i don't know <laughs> luckily he accepted within two three times of uh, you know uh, discussion he said okay fine i can give you uh, exclusively separately for bionimtech i can give you some place you can start your production so i signed the agreement for 7 uh, years and from 2024 we are starting our commercial production so this is a you know i don't know it's a journey of uh, fortune as well as but uh, our focus our focus is very clear we now at this point i can't invest money on making i mean making a full mass infrastructure but i want to hire some place and make the product so at that point we were success our team is success by convincing that uh, person so now the journey is like that yep um i would like to open the floor for questions um i think those who have questions uh, you can raise your hand we will let you unmute you have to introduce yourselves and then ask your question or you can type your question in the chat box and we will be happy to take it maybe i am much technical high east <laughs> but uh, you can ask any general questions also happy to address the general questions in business so i think while we wait um, i mean i can go on i have a lot of questions for you <laughs> but then uh, while we wait for uh, uh, you know students to ask their questions um could you talk a little bit about yourself um, you know do you, um, you uh, what is your family like uh do you yeah. um, you know have children how do you manage what you do at work because you yeah. are running a company it's probably more than full time work um how do you you know sort of maintain your uh, personal and your professional uh, lives and balance that yeah uh, coming to the business uh, it's a family business i can say more uh, family business like myself the founder and my husband is the co-founder i am leading the biology team and he is leading the chemical uh, team and uh, we have two kids uh, neha and uh, uh, yeah meantime when i start me is bionimtech in 2013 in 2018 i start another startup company neha green lab exclusively for making this reference standards so my daughter is neha she is doing her first year chemical engineering in uh, st joseph college 
and my son uh, mr kartikeyan he is uh, seventh standard yeah so but uh, luckily i got a good family a very understandable like uh, my kids are more uh, happy with the working mother uh, not even the working mother and entrepreneur uh, he, they are very happy and proud to be having a uh, thing and they adjust uh, you know by themselves whatever they don't depend on me maybe they have fine tuned like that from you know from kids itself they were tuned in, in such a way that uh, in our family <laughs> kids were not depending on the parents but still we gave more than the time more time instead of spending more time we give quality of time to them we spend quality of time and yeah it's uh, going on even uh, i can say that uh, both of my kids sometimes they support for me in doing some office work also so like that they were happy to come in the saturdays uh, my daughter now she is in chemical engineering she used to come and support me my son always supports me in taking the printouts making the invoice uh, scan so many things even now the video is not he came and uh, rectified and he went so, so they, it's a happy home with uh, they are very happy in working in the business also they show their interest in the business that's so right I, I think, yeah it's a, it's a, it's a, so it's very easy me for me to balance both the family as well as business because everyone is involved in business here yeah no, no that's great and i think that's also very great learning at a very early age for the children uh, to know uh, what their parents do and also how they do it um you work you you mentioned a lot of the capacity building or the training that you do which means you work with a lot of young people and you said that you have a team and you still work with students what do you look for um, in students when you pick them for training or even if you pick them to employ them in your company what kind of skills and i mean both technical as well as personal skills do you look for uh, when you uh, hire yes ma'am actually we always uh, we give training workshop uh, project and internship for the students so in that uh, uh, you know a group of uh, you know some project students or something some will be very studious you know they want to interact with me personally and they i can see their uh, smartness and sometimes i can see their enthu enthusiasm to learn more that kind of people sometimes i give them a chance to work as a free intern in my company so in that way i am supporting the students community uh, i don't have a special criteria to select i give space for all the people it is open for it's a, it's a open internship or open training students a uh, training uh, program like they can take a 10 days or 15 days or one month uh, training program in that some people is uh, some students will be more uh, happy more interactive so for that students i'll be giving extra interest extra days for working with me so that is how we are working there is no selection criteria i want to come everyone to enter and you know interact with our team they want to do the projects no some people students uh, see we can't uh, initially you know from initial step itself we can't make a student she is average she is super smart like that we should not discriminate only when they come inside the industry or some space to work they will understand they will start working on that so i give space there is no selective selection criteria for the students they can come enroll and start the projects that's great. I think uh, the fact that there is an opportunity for students to do that and learn. Uh, I think there are many girls who are here on this forum today who are our grantees who work in the pharma space or pharmaceutical space, especially with chemistry backgrounds. So I hope this is useful for them to know that such opportunities exist. Um, Ritika, um, I request uh, whether you can ask some of our grantees uh, who work in this space to um, ask their questions. Yes, uh, sure. So uh, I have told them, I think they should come up on their own and ask the questions if they have any. Otherwise, uh, a few of them are there who work on this uh, kind of work. Uh, Vishaka, Vaishnavi, Chachane for sure. You are doing some work on uh, these kind of, on these lines. Thank you so much for your sharing, Doctor. It's really very inspiring, especially for me because I've always wanted to um, start up business actually in this STEM um, program. But uh, my question to you is that um, I'm pretty sure when um, you were starting up your business and everything, I'm sure there were failures. 
how did you cope up with your failures doctor like how emotionally because uh, to be frank yes women we have a uh, different level of emotions and all these things right and plus you have family and everything so how did you balance your failure and like um what was the the duration for you to like overcome the failure and how did you do it doctor yeah thanks thank you uh, actually um, so when i do my phd itself it is like it is another phase of an uh, business like a phd also we can't have a, you know timings to go and come so at that time itself i started uh, balancing both the family as well as uh, you know business i mean uh, the timings the based on the timings but uh, when coming to the business point i, I can always i will always say that business words? Pardon? Or, I think we lost you in between, uh, Dr. Minaga. No, I am. I can see. Yeah, uh, I can hear you now. So, when coming to the business, first thing, there is no space for emotion or anything else. Our focus is only on the business. Whether it can be our see, I I I will not say you should sacrifice the family for the business success. I. One second. See, I will not say that uh, you should sacrifice the family for the business. There should be a uh, family to support you. Then only you can be success in business. But you should take a decision whether you have a, you know, you can balance both the family as well as the business. Once you enter the business, you can't take the emotion in your hand. Before entering into the business, you should ready to you should analyze whether you and your family is able to support you. Your family is able to support you. It is not like entering into the business and taking the emotions. You always take decision based on the brain, not based on the heart. The very important thing is business doesn't know gender, whether it is a male or female. You are committed 24 by 7. It, it is not like I am a woman. I can only work on uh, 9 to 10. After 8 o'clock, I can't uh, uh, come answer to a call. I will not come for a client visit uh, for Sundays. No, not like that. I'm not like that. Sorry, I'm not like that. Business doesn't know gender. Like how a male works, like the female works. That's it. There is no place for emotion for a successful business. You are committed to your client. You have to produce the product, quality product on time. That is very important. That's it. Okay. Uh, I think Vishaka, you might have a question to ask. So go ahead. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, my yes. is Vishaka. Uh, ma'am, I have a question that... Uh, how to confirm that whether our API is 99% uh, pure or not? Means uh, there are many techniques, but which is the easiest technique to check at lab level rather than melting point, that conventional melting point method? Yeah, that is a very important thing. You have to refer, you you have a target molecule, you have to check whether if it is 99% purity, definitely you have to go for HPLC. You know, rather than yes, melting point is one of the parameter, then you have to go for a HPLC and see whether your product is 99.9 or what is the percentage of purity. You have to check with the standard. And if there is any impurity present, you have to analyze what are all the impurities uh, it is uh, uh, present in that, uh, uh, you know, solution. And uh, if you want to make it uh, as per the regulatory, like if it is an EP or uh, USP based on the pharmacopoeia, you have to make the, you know, there will be some... There is a procedure for HPLC based on the pharmacopoeia. So HPLC is the best one to analyze, to say the purity of the compound next to the melting point. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Gaumale, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, ma'am, I have a question that uh, what will be your uh, motivation throughout your journey? How can you manage these things? Motivation is nothing money. That's it. <laughs> For business, the money is the motivation. You should be a profitable business. Uh, my motivation is I want to uh, I want to emerge as a uh, unicorn. 
and then i want to have i want to serve uh, global clients and mainly uh, make in india so i we want to make the products we don't want india to depend on any products imported products so uh, we want to we are choosing the molecules like that the imported molecules most of the imported molecules we are choosing and making by our own in our lab we are understanding the procedure and we want to make it a commercial production so that is my motivation no dependency on import molecules okay thank you ma'am thank you Also, tell us a little bit about Women's Biotech Park because it's very unique. It supports women entrepreneurs. There aren't too many centers focused on supporting women based, women led uh, startups, and they're doing a fantastic job. So I know there are a few people who have joined here who are also based in the southern part of India. So could you talk a little bit about uh, Women's Biotech Park and what kind of support they provide? Yeah, Women's Biotech Park, as I said, it is the Asia's first Women's Biotech Park. It it was actually it came on two thousand something, I think so. So 25 years, more than 25 years of uh, uh, journey, the Biotech Park have. Uh, very interesting thing is uh, women. So they allow only the women to do the, I mean, they, say, uh, they allow places for the women to start the business. But it is also not like that. Just like that, uh, if the, they don't, uh, you know, it's not some uh, rental or lease basis. It is concept basis. You have to give the proposal to them. The proposal is also screened by a committee of people. And then the, only if you are showing a business model, they give the space to you. Other than the space, they give uh, for, there is two uh, type of uh, support. Like there, there is a bionist is there. So that inside bionist, people can take it as an incubator. I mean, they can have a workspace and do their R&D work. Like the early stage incubators, they can be like that. The other manufacturing, I have a manufacturing center. They'll be giving a shed, a full form of shed where we can have all the heavy instruments and start manufacturing the products. Uh, so the very good thing is there will be like, it's a conceptual, conceptual based model uh, manufacturing unit. Apart from this, they now, they are, they also, there is a committee of people. We have a chairman, we have a general manager. There is a team of people. They support us, you know, not only this um, uh, thing, they also give a uh, mentoring. If we have some problem, we can go and discuss with them. Financially, also, they are supporting us with some grants. Of course, it's a competitive grant, but still, there are so many schemes. As I said, we are one of the Bayrak Seed Fund winner from Biotech Park. So there is a, another, some of the schemes are there. Startup India scheme is there. They are also supporting people with the Startup India scheme. MSME scheme. Most of the people, we are beneficiaries of this MSME IVP grant. And... Uh, they also support us if there is any financial that is very important right the it filing patent patent filing there we have a uh, madam bandida she is there they she is uh, supporting us if you want to make a patent she is support us right from uh, right up to corrections up to filing she support us so they have a different sector of people finance finance also there is a team of people to support us so anywhere if you are struck or somewhere else physically mentally or uh, financially or uh, technically knowledge by anything they are ready to support us so biotech park is a very good place i'm so happy with that uh, our women's biotech park thank you for sharing uh, i think uh, it's a very unique place so i thought students should know that it exists uh, we have a question on chat from bhageshri ma'am what type of failures come uh, to or you come across in your professional uh, life I think challenges um, is what she needs. Challenges, yeah, I can understand. <laughs> so challenges is while making the product, you know, uh, even though it is a, uh, we are we have a group of expert, we are we have updated learning, so many confident on making the product. Sometimes, uh, for example, one of the product, uh, the client, I can say, is a case study. He supported us for one year to make the product, but while coming to the commercial, making the lab scale validation, it failed. Uh, so we don't know what to do because uh, he has supported a lot for R&D and uh, uh, it cannot be like we can't uh, pay back the money also, right? It's R&D. He know, the client also know uh, it's an R&D like that. So the mutual understanding, because of the mutual understanding, the client said, okay, fine, we, I will drop this project and we can go with the other project like that. So, but the thing is, um, he, there are you know, some failures. I, I, it cannot be a failure. Uh, we were not able to meet the specification. 
like that i can say uh, we were not able to meet the specification even though you know thousands of uh, experiments were done uh, that pro particular product we were not able to meet the specification but still uh, you know it was the project is hold on it is not a failure the project is hold on so we were concentrating on the other projects this type of uh, fair, you know challenges we were facing you know in our journey the other thing financially sometimes yes financially also <clears throat> sometimes you know yeah, not only you know uh, as an entrepreneur we have to face so many things when we are building up a team we need so many so funds to keep the people to run the machineries to face the maintenance everything so if there is a problem in finance we we have to jump inside as a director we have to jump inside and support with our finance with our money personal money so like that sir, there are so many challenges is there the company should not uh, you know uh, get drained it it has to be uh, feeded oxygen feeded you know monthly wise it has to be feeded if there is if the client money is not there or if there is any financial problem we have to jump inside as a director we have to jump inside and push our feed with our personal uh, finances so like that some challenges failure it's not a failure it's a it's a challenges we are facing as a startup a everyone will face this madam yes absolutely and i don't think it's a, just a startup thing i think anybody who is working in a competitive space uh, will deal with challenges like this. Uh, we have a question from Vaishnavi. Who inspires you and why? I think you mentioned about Dr. Shaw, but if there is a mentor or an role model for you who is also more closer and like accessible, it will be nice to hear about that too. <laughs> mm, yeah, as I said, always Dr. Shah is my motivational. Uh, Kiran Shah, madam, is my mo model and motivational. Other than that, my mentors, uh, I said, no, I have given a slide of uh, people with uh, three people. Uh, of course, my, uh, yeah, my co my husband, uh, Dr. Mahendran, he is uh, one of my, you know, good uh, mentors. He gave a good advice on making some uh, strategies, business strategies. The other one is Mr. Uh, Swaminathan. He is my uh, mentor, uh, mentor as well as business strategies. He always give a positive way of uh, uh, even when I face, uh, feel some failures or some uh, down, down back something else, he used to say, no, no, this is the place. This is how you have to make it. So he used to give good advice, uh, you know, uh, so it's a, in a very friendly way. So he is a very good mentor. And another one is Mr. Uh, Vishwa, Vishwa, sir. He also, he is our... Uh, uh, business uh, uh, development, a BD, he is a BD team and he always used to have, a, you know, see what I say is when there is a positive of people around us to support us, to motivate us. So all those people are our role models. I, I can't uh, pinpoint everyone. This, these are all people around me, very accessible. I am saying uh, daily access people who is motivating yeah. me. But other than that, if I am saying I want to be uh, like that, definitely. Uh, first is uh, Kiran, madam. I don't think she she is the one. And now, uh, yeah. <laughs> nobody has replaced her. So globally, I can say, cause um, Elon Musk. I don't know why. I I liked his approach. I liked his uh, way of uh, taking the business in a very challenging way. You know, he don't he doesn't yeah. bother about anything. Yeah. Uh, apart from uh, some of the the feedbacks, or I don't bother about that. He is a very challenging. He is a very passionate person. I I was very. Uh, he is my one of my another role model. Yeah. Cool. We have a question from Prajekta. Uh, when you get depressed, how do you motivate yourself to be strong? Uh, yeah, uh, this is a very good question. Like normally I, I also have uh, also some uh, up and downs where I sometimes I face uh, some uh, not, I can't say it's a depression, some place where, uh, where I have to uh, pass some emotional feelings or something else. But uh, at that time, what I will do, I think I will go for a sleep, good sleep. That's it. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. We have a question from Siddhi. Hello, ma'am. I'm working with animal toxicology. Uh, can you suggest any courses in biotech which will help me that I can pursue? How can I take any course for biotech which will help me? This is a very general, like uh, based on your 
interest you are working with animal toxicology so you can take some uh, uh, biotech there is so much of uh, different uh, things are there which pro which domain you are interested you have to take this is, i can't suggest it's a very general question you can take your okay. interested domain yeah you have a question i think from uh, dipari uh, you can unmute and ask your question dipari since you raised your hand hello ma'am uh, yeah. ma'am do you prepare formulations too formulation yes 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 we are herbal and nutraceutical formulations yes yes we are we have a team for doing herbal and nutraceutical formulations yes we have which type of formulations ma'am which time we have we are working on the we have a spray dryer we have a spray dryer in our uh, company so mm -hmm. we have a lab scale formulator and a spray uh, formulator as well as a spray dryer so we are working on the powder form of uh, herbal formulations we are working okay okay so any uh, branded product that you have prepared uh, for uh, of your own no we are working as of uh, formulation we are working as a uh, weight well, labeling we, we, we have a not uh, we are not uh, entered it directly into the market so for the clients we do a third party manufacturing third party manufacturing yes okay thank you ma'am I think I hope I have taken all the questions that we have on chat as well as those who have raised their hands. Um, we always end uh, before I formally thank you. We always end our sessions by asking you to describe what a day in your life looks like. How do you start and end your day, and what is what happens through a, the course of a typical day in your life? No, I I didn't get you. Sorry. Uh, Could you walk us through what a day looks like? in your life like how what does for example a friday look like for you how do you start your day what do you do <laughs> so for uh, entrepreneur there is first thing there is no sunday monday tuesday or anything else but normally i start monday with a very good positive energy i love to start with monday normally i don't know about others i i want i like monday very much so i start with a very positive vibrations uh i start normally i wake up at 5 o'clock and start working some mails or something else and 6 6 i will go for a small walk or a half an hour walk and then i come back and uh, uh then i start making some breakfast to, to my family around 9:30 to 10 everything will be over and then i will uh, go to the factory i'll be back around uh, 6 or 7 o'clock uh then normally we used to have a, a discussion with my family members for just 9 to 10 we will have a small discussion what happening to your school what is your college and they ask me what what happened to in your company what is today any new clients like that they will <laughs> ask so we will have a small discussion and after 10 even i uh, so i i like uh, even uh, late night i like very much because there is no disturbance or anything else after 10 i used to make i that is the time where i make uh, start writing drafting mail to the new clients uh, or making some proposals or making some powerpoints i always prefer uh, 10 to 1 that's that's my day great thank you so much for sharing your journey sharing uh, your work uh, and also you know your inspirations with us uh we really value that you spend this time with us uh with all these girls on this forum a lot of these girls come from very small towns in maharashtra uh, they are just oh. learning to build or rather building their confidence to be able to even ask questions on forums like this so i'm very glad that some of them did do uh if they wish to reach out to you uh, they will do so through us and we'll be very happy to Please. share any questions or comments they have very um, happy very happy have to be in touch with you so thank you very much uh and thank you to all of you who joined today I request all of you to switch on your cameras for just a minute so that we can get a nice group photo um before we uh, end the session. So now I can see very beautiful faces. Yes. <laughs> very young beautiful faces. I'll take a screenshot to
Yeah. Done. All right. Okay. Thank you very much and have a good evening, all of you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.